Good afternoon and welcome to our live webinar, Secure Act, Secure Lifetime Income Options Now. On behalf of the entire team at Anua and Dietrich, thank you for tuning in. My name is Krista Kotelis and I'll be the conference moderator this afternoon. If you have any technical difficulties with your webinar software, please direct those questions to our tech manager, Lisa Strout, via the question area on your control panel. Any questions asked during the live session will be answered at the end of today's presentation. They can also be sent via the question feature on your webinar control panel. Any questions that we are not able to get to will be answered offline. Our presenter for today's session from Anua is Jeff Dietrich, Executive Vice President with Dietrich. Jeff works directly with plan fiduciaries, plan sponsors, plan advisors, administrators, record keepers, and the highest rated life insurance companies to provide custom lifetime income features within 401k and 403, 403b plans by helping employees build a guaranteed monthly income for life while eliminating the long-term liabilities, financial risk, or costs associated with traditional pensions. At this time, I'll go ahead and turn the presentation over to Jeff. Thank you, Krista, and uh, hello, everybody. Um, Somewhere along the line, we, did, we got things confused here. I thought the presentation today was going to be about uh, three little birds in honor of Bob Marley's, what would be his 75th birthday, but um, I think we'll still have uh, some of that present because uh, thanks to the SECURE Act, I think every little thing's going to be all right here. Um, now that I got my icebreaker out of the way, um, it, it truly is an exciting time and um, Thank you all for joining us today. Um, we're gonna try to keep this short uh, to 30 minutes or less. And um, just ask that you remember to submit your questions and we'll get to as many as we can. If, if they really get rolling, then uh, we'll keep this going. We do have an hour, but uh, do wanna be aware of everybody's time. So um, you know, just as a, a little background um, here at Dietrich, um, We've guaranteed retirement income benefits for three quarters of a million pension recipients. Uh, we've worked side by side with plan sponsors, insurance companies, and retirement plan intermediaries to make this happen. And we've seen a lot of pension plans go away over the last 40 years. And at the same time, um, more recently, we've been working to bring them back, um, or at least I would say that the positive aspects of the pension plan back. Uh, we created ANUA uh, in the spring of last year to bring together the different parties within the retirement space, from plan sponsors to advisors, TPAs and record keepers, insurance companies and participants. We created ANUA to bring these parties together and to offer a combined solution that addresses the need for retirement income. So today, um, about six weeks removed, almost two months, I guess, from the passing of the SECURE Act, uh, we're gonna try to make some sense out of the SECURE Act's retirement income provisions. There's been several webinars uh, designed around the SECURE Act. There's a lot going on in the SECURE Act. Um, I've taken in as many of those webinars as I can, even though a lot of that does not apply to our space. Um, want to see how everybody is talking about it and what different items are really getting the most traction and uh, not just what really is uh, our line of business here with retirement income. But nonetheless, today we're going to try to boil down the retirement income side of things for you um, from the viewpoint of ANUA. <coughs> Excuse me. So Secure Act, and I have to minimize this so I can see the screen, pardon me. So December 20th of last year, uh, setting up every community up for Retirement Enhancement Act, also known as the SECURE Act, was passed into law. As I mentioned, it includes a lot of different things in there from reforms on 529 plans to retirement plans, defined benefit, defined contribution, and IRAs. I'm sure everybody's aware of the elimination of the stretch IRA. That seems to really be uh, hurting some plans for people, and I've already seen some creative ways to try to work around that. Um, but the SECURE Act was the largest piece of legislation to hit the retirement space since 
PPA of 2006. And from a uh, retirement income standpoint, the, Cir the SECURE Act really hit three parts. Um, it provides a safe harbor for planned fiduciaries when offering in-plan lifetime income, Section 204 of the SECURE Act. Section 203 of the SECURE Act requires mandates disclosure of lifetime income projections for participants or on, I should say, participant statements. And then it eliminates one of the biggest roadblocks that we've heard over the years regarding guaranteed income and annuities in defined contribution plans is it addresses portability. We're gonna take a look at each one of these sections and we're gonna look at the actual, get my computer to work here. The actual language uh, from the SECURE Act. The SECURE Act itself, uh, probably two or 300 pages, and maybe about 20 of them talked to the guaranteed income portion, and we pulled that out. We're going to start with the safe harbor. Section 2. Point, or 204 of the SECURE amends ERISA Section 404E to allow safe harbor for annuity selection. First, I want to define a term that they use in here, guaranteed retirement income account or guaranteed retirement income contract. Guaranteed retirement income contract, or as I heard it referred to uh, in another webinar, a GRIC, means an annuity contract for a fixed term or a contract or provision or feature thereof, which provides guaranteed benefits annually or more frequently for at least the remainder of the life of the participant were the joint lives of the participant and the participant's de designated beneficiary as part of an individual account plan. A couple key words that, that pop out of that. Guaranteed, lifetime, income. Other words, an annuity. An annuity is the only device that can provide a guaranteed retirement income that can't be outlived. The safe harbor in a nutshell addresses five pieces of this, the, the, uh, the safe harbor provision. Prudency, uh, or from an insurance company's perspective, I should say. Prudency, license and good standing, cost, timing, and liability. I'm going to start with prudency here. Under section, ERISA section 404E1, a planned fiduciary is deemed to have fulfilled his or her fiduciary duty with regard to the selection of an annuity provider if the fiduciary engages in an objective, thorough, and analytical search to identify potential insurance companies, considers the financial capability of the annuity provider and the cost of the contract relative to the benefits and contract features and administrative services to be provided. And then based on those considerations, concludes that at the time of selection, the insurer is financially capable of satisfying the obligations under the contract and that the relative cost of the annuity is reasonable. License and good standing, second part. The financial capability of the insurer. The fiduciary will be deemed to satisfy the last two items that I mentioned before, that the insurer is financially capable and that the cost of the contract relative to the benefit and contract features and administrative services provided are reasonable. If the fiduciary obtains written representation from the insurer that the insurer is licensed to offer the product that they're applying for, that at the time of selection, the insurer for each of the immediately preceding seven years operated under a certificate of authority from the insurance commissioner of its domiciled state, filed audited financial statements, maintains necessary reserves which satisfy, satisfy all states where the insurer does business, and is not operating under an order of rehabilitation, supervision, or liquidation. Additionally, the insurer must undergo a financial examination by the insurance commissioner of its domiciled state at least every five years. And finally, that the insurer will notify 
the fiduciary of any change of circumstances that would preclude the insurer from making the same representation at the time of the issuance of contract. And that's important. We're going to talk about that a little bit. At the time of issuance of the contract, if the fiduciary receives no notice of change in circumstances and receives the certification from the insurance company outlining the above, then the fiduciary is deemed to have fulfilled their liability or duty, I should say. Cost. There is no requirement for the fiduciary to select the lowest cost. Important points to point out here is that shall not be construed to require a fiduciary to select the lowest cost contract and that the considerations rather are the value of the contract, including the features of the product, the benefits and the attributes of the insurer in conjunction with the cost of the contract. Timing. At the time of selection of the insurer or insurers and contract issuance, there's no requirement of the fiduciary to review the appropriateness of the selection after the purchase of the contract for a participant or beneficiary. So from a timing standpoint, if at the time of purchase of the annuity contract, the previous conditions are met, then going forward, there's no requirement for the plan fiduciary to review the appropriateness of that contract. It's said and done. And lastly, or not lastly, next, yeah. Um, from a review standpoint, timing under B here, periodic review, a fiduciary will be deemed to have conducted a peri periodic review as long as they conduct it annually. So it's an annual review requirement, an annual requirement of certification from the insurer. And again, from a timing standpoint, no requirements for that insurer for that contract, I should say, once the contract has been purchased. Last but not least, liability, future liability, I should say. A fiduciary meeting the requirements of the safe harbor will not be liable following the distribution of any benefit pursuant to the contract or for any losses that may result to the participant due to the insurer's inability to satisfy obligations. This is big. The provision itself does not have an effective date. Um, and I should have said this earlier, we are not attorneys. None of this is legal representation. This is interpretation, our interpretation um, of the SECURE Act. Um, but what I have heard, read, and been consulted on, that anything without an effective date is effective immediately. So in summary on the safe harbor, plan sponsors can now satisfy fiduciary obligations in choosing the annuity provider by conducting an objective, thorough, and analytical search at the outset when they evaluate annuity providers. Plan sponsor must also evaluate the insurance carrier's financial capability to satisfy provisions of the contract, as well as engage in a cost-benefit analysis with respect to the annuity offering. Again, they do not have to select the lowest cost, but they do have to justify its reasonableness based on its features, carrier capabilities. The safe harbor is also satisfied by the plan sponsor, receiving and relying on written representation from the insurance company demonstrating their financial standing. Finally, again, to qualify for the safe harbor, the plan sponsor must draw the conclusion that the carrier is financially capable, the cost is reasonable, and they must document this process. So here at ANUA, 
In Dietrich, we've been doing this, as I mentioned, for 40 years. On this slide, you'll see some of the pieces that we use to satisfy fiduciary requirements uh, in the defined benefit space, in the defined contribution space. We've begun receiving certifications from the insurance companies for the safe harbor, for our clients that already have annuity features in their plans. Um, and we retain this information. Typically, a review is done twice a year with our clients. One, from a fiduciary standpoint, and two, from a process standpoint and activity. The nice thing about Anua is, as I mentioned earlier, is that we bring together all of the retirement plan providers, intermediaries, sponsors, in order to deliver a turnkey solution for guaranteed income in retirement plans. Second part of the SECURE Act that we're gonna to touch on is disclosure. In my opinion, this is the, I think, the most exciting. While the safe harbor is something that has been talked about and talked about along with portability, um, the plan sponsors need a safe harbor in order to offer a, a guaranteed income product. Um, and we, we have that. We have some work to do, um, a lot of different certifications and uh, reviews that need to be done, but that safe harbor is there. Yeah, the process to achieve that safe harbor is in existence here at ANUA. Um, but I think that disclosure of lifetime income on participant statements really is what is going to move the needle. Um, read a lot of things that talked about the SECURE Act. Is it the answer? Some, as early as this morning on LinkedIn, somebody posted an article, is the SECURE Act the answer that will put annuities in DC plans? Um, person said no. Other comments kind of supported that no. Um, and now I don't think it is necessarily the SECURE Act. I think it's a provision of the SECURE Act. And I think it's this provision. I think it's disclosure. I think this disclosure, um, while it is probably the trickiest of the provisions as it outlines, as you'll see here, I think it is the most effective. I think it will increase awareness, not only of participants' savings and whether it's on track or not, um, but that there are solutions out there to turn savings into income, to kind of change that mindset uh, from accumulation to decumulation and protection and guarantee. So under disclosure, Section 203 of the SECURE Act amends ERISA Section 105A2 by adding Section D here, lifetime income disclosure. In a nutshell, uh, defines lifetime income disclosure, talks about how to disclose it, about conversion assumptions, which is the tricky part of all of this. Again, talks about liability. Again, liability is a big issue. Um, so protections for plan sponsors and administrators that disclose guaranteed income amounts and timing. Um, two things that really aren't mentioned in detail here um, is that disclosure will only be required, or they, they don't stand out here, I should say, only required on one benefit statement annually for any 12-month period, and that this mandate applies only to individual account plan benefit statements, the only one that's required. Well, I think it's a good practice uh, for every uh, structure, uh, individual, mostly managed accounts, um, are the only ones covered under this mandate at this time. So lifetime income disclosure, by definition, is a stream of equivalent stream, <laughs> lifetime income stream, which is the equivalent of the total accrued benefits, accrued benefits, current accrued benefit of a participant or beneficiary. Lifetime income stream means the monthly payments the participant or beneficiary would receive if the total accrued benefits, accrued benefits is their account balance, of such participant or beneficiary were used to provide lifetime income. The disclosure 
is to be in the form of a life annuity and a joint and survivor annuity, which covers a participant and a beneficiary. Goes on to talk about how to determine the age of the beneficiary, assuming the age of the beneficiary is the same of the participant. And then lastly, a definition that the amounts are based on assumptions specified by rules prescribed by the Department of Labor. So this is really what can a participant's balance buy today? Model disclosure. Department of Labor will issue a sample that will satisfy plan sponsor requirements for disclosure, as well as language addressing the illustrative nature of the income amounts and the assumptions on which the income amount is based. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. This, you know, so we defined what lifetime income disclosure and how it has to happen. Um, now the Department of Labor is saying that they are going to provide guidance not only on how to disclose it, um, but in a second you'll see here assumptions and rules that the Department of Labor will prescribe the final assumptions on which the income amount is based. And that that basis may be a single set of specific assumptions, or it could be a range of permissible assumptions uh, at the plan sponsor or administrator's choosing. Liability, big one here. Whether or not this disclosure is required, in other words, if it's an individual account plan or not, fiduciary sponsors, administrators are not liable for the accuracy of the disclosure if the Department of Labor prescribed model disclosure and conversion basis is used. So here's your protection. As long as you're following the rules set forth by the Department of Labor, you're not liable for any differences, questions, changes that may uh, come about from year to year uh, with those disclosures and the accuracy of this disclosures, and that's where I find a problem. Um, and I think that's where the problem lies. And then lastly, um, which may be even bigger problem, um, is the timing of all of this. Uh, the Department of Labor basically has one year from the passing of the SECURE Act, again, December 20th, uh, to issue this model disclosure and to issue those conversion basis. Um, and then at that point, disclosure rules will apply to all individual participant account plans, statements issued one year after those final rules are issued by the DOL. So theoretically, we're talking 2022 uh, by my calculation. As I mentioned, um, we believe that this is the most effective part of the SECURE Act, both from a participant um, and an advisor perspective, uh, because it's gonna promote awareness. It's gonna promote awareness of savings, whether or not the participant contributions are on track, um, but there's still a lot of unknown and, and work for the Department of Labor to do. Um, I think that, you know, we looked at this before, or I should say the Department of Labor looked at this before, and uh, it was too complicated, so they, they kind of backed off. And now they're trying again. And, um, you know, here at ANUA, we built this. We have a toolkit, and we have partnerships um, in the retirement space that address disclosure, as well as the safe harbor that we talked about earlier. Um, our model has been built to combine the issuance of disclosures as well as those written representations to provide that turnkey solution to plan administrators, fiduciaries, participants, and intermediaries. But I would argue that where we're different is that the Department of Labor's prescribed basis for income disclosure, I think, it misses the mark. Um, and you know, I think because of the previous attempt to do this, and their abandonment of that, that there could there is a better way. And this is the way that we've been doing this. Um, we've been working with the industry to promote the use of market pricing. Uh, so what we're gonna show real quick here um, is how we do that. Um, first and foremost, you mentioned changing the mindset. Uh, Secure Act, again, I think is gonna change 
And I, I just think demographics will change how participants and plan sponsors look at defined contribution plans. They're the primary retirement, employer-sponsored retirement plan. Um, we've looked at it as an accumulation vehicle. The SECURE Act is maybe not the first step, but the biggest step in looking at accumulation, retirement income. But I know the way that we look at it is that every employee should have access to guaranteed income. Our annuity direct quote system offers that. By offering this, again, not only are you increasing the awareness of the product, a product that has guarantees, but you're also helping participants understand where they are. And this is where market pricing comes into play. Um, if anybody here is familiar with the defined benefit plans and you take, look, take a look back at where defined benefit plans have been and where they are now and how they're valued, it's been a roller coaster. It's been ever changing, um, it's volatile, and it's because it's government prescribed regulations. Defined benefit plans were marked to market, they're based on market liability. We may still have pensions, but we don't. And maybe this time we'll get it right. Instead of using some set of assumptions based on fictitious amounts where participants can potentially uh, open up questions and lawsuits and things like that that is gonna really derail the whole objective here, why not go straight to the market and see what account balances will buy? And that's what a new direct quote does. Any given year, your account balance is gonna be different based on performance. Well, so is your income amount. Income amounts are based on interest rates. They're based on product features. A lot of different ways of doing that out there. The new direct quote, we keep it simple. Easy access easy entry to build your quote, and an easy output in seconds. So what we're doing here is we're working with our legal partners um, to get in front of the Department of Labor and, and discuss this concept of market pricing. Um, this process, as I mentioned, we have installed with current clients. It's a very simple process. It's an accurate process. What the participant is seeing is what the participant is getting. It's not, let me show you this, and then, oh, you like that? Let me go out and get some, you know, an actual quote, and it's way different because the prior one was based on assumptions. Another nice feature about a new direct quote is that it provides for institutional pricing. Our solutions here are in plan, and they're on the group side of the insurance companies. They provide pricing efficiencies, mortality efficiencies, which generate pricing efficiencies, administrative efficiencies, ease of setting these up. It's not a 40-page application for a participant to do this. Um, and with ADQ, uh, it's not all or nothing. Participants can go in there, administrators can go in there, advisors can go in there to consult with their participants about portions of balances and different benefit forms that they would like to generate income under. It's also a customizable. We can set this up on your benefits page. We can set this up um, on your advisory page. Uh, we can customize it to the carriers that you choose. It can be a single carrier provider or single yeah, carrier solution. It can be a multi-carrier solution. We can do this in aggregate, we work with certain administrators for multi-employer plans that do this now, where depending on the frequency of their disclosures and retirements, they send us a file of all the participants. That file is then run through ADQ on a batch basis, and the output gives the administrator all of the amounts to disclose to the participants in one fell swoop. So it's a pretty powerful tool that um, if you would like a demo, uh, we'd be happy to give you an individual demo and access to it. I know we're uh, at our 30 minute mark and it's just about time. So um, portability was something I wasn't gonna spend a whole lot of time on. Um, section 109 of the SECURE Act amends section 401 of the IRS code regarding portability of lifetime income. 
Um, in a nutshell, you know, the SECURE Act, again, is defining the idea of in-plan lifetime income or annuities and addressing the instances where a plan sponsor or a plan adopts an in-plan annuity or already has one. And there's a change. That change may prohibit the plan from keeping the option um, or perhaps they've just decided to eliminate it. Um, the change in the code allows for in-service qualified distributions of that annuity on a participant level. Uh, qualified distributions are defined as a trustee to trustee transfer um, or a trustee to participant, i.e. IRA type rollover. This provision doesn't have a stated effective date either, um, so therefore it's effective immediately. And um, like I said at the opening, you know, this is the second biggest one outside of the safe harbor um, that we've heard as a, as a roadblock here. Um, flip through a couple of these other legalese on the, the portability side, but um, portability change is helpful because it has been that significant administrative roadblock. Um, Administration-wise, plans will no longer need to fear the adoption of in-plan annuities and income options um, due to limited functionality from their plan administrators. Um, if they have one, you know, they can go somewhere else that doesn't and the participant can still keep their annuity. Um, and I think what we're going to find is over the next couple of years here, we're going to see growing trend of administrators that can take this on and, and portability really will be a thing of the past. Um, again, participant wise, I think this is, this is a huge benefit because anybody that does value the annuity, the guaranteed income, um, you know, and then along with some of the other provisions of the SECURE Act, um, participants will now be able to really realize that full benefit of annuities without having to, uh, one of the general ideas of annuities is that you're, uh, you're trading today's contributions for tomorrow's guarantees. Well, if you kind of, you know, jump off the horse halfway through the race, you lose a lot of the benefit um, that you were buying into in the beginning, and portability eliminates that. Um, I read an interview, and, and, and I'm going to kind of close with this, but um, I read an interview with Sri Reddy, who is, uh, he was with Prudential, now he's Principal Senior Vice President of Retirement and Income Solutions, and I think he said it best, and I, I wrote it down, and um, actually I copied it, and I'm going to read it word for word, because I think that this is kind of really sums up where the SECURE Act uh, was pointed to address and where it will take us. And it's that one of the unintended consequences of the current DC plan structure is early withdrawal. Current rules, participant actions inhibit the growth of retirement savings. An accumulation annuity funded by employer contributions and restricted from cash out will allow for pension-like benefit growth within a DC plan. There's a lot there, employer contributions, restrictions. Um, but I think it's that's what we're talking about here at Anua. That's what we're building towards. That's what we have built to a degree, along with industry partners, trying to bring everybody to get together to solve this problem. And we feel that we are in the best position to do that because we know how pensions work. We know the good sides of pensions. We know the bad side of pensions. And above all, we know guaranteed income and annuities. So while pensions may have gone away, uh, for most of us at least, I think the SECURE Act's bringing them back. At this point, five minutes over, I'm going to open it up for questions. We're going to do a little technical swap here with computers to see what we got going on. What options are available and what solutions are available? That's a great question. Um, there's actually some already built solutions out in the marketplace today. Um, and I guess from solutions and options, I, I'm going to consider them the same thing right now. But, um, you know, there are inst there, there, there's retail solutions. I think there have been retail solutions for a while where a participant would roll out of the plan. Uh, go to their financial advisor with their IRA and generate some sort of guaranteed income as part of their 
retirement income strategy. Um, what the SECURE Act is doing and what ANUA is, is championing is, is doing that on a plan level before the participant rolls out. Um, having the plan sponsor take more of an active role in providing that benefit. And the solutions that are out there right now, you have at a very simplified level, and what we showed here with ANUA direct quote, is the in-plan distribution annuity, uh, income annuity at retirement. Participant retires, they take a portion of their balance, they direct the plan sponsor to purchase guaranteed income through an annuity with a piece of that balance uh, to start immediately. They retire, you know, first day of the month after retirement, they start receiving a monthly income. That monthly income is payable under the form that they select, whether that's for their lifetime, for their and their spouse's lifetime. There's periods, that, certain periods that can be guaranteed on there, where if you die within a certain time period, you're guaranteed a, a number of payments. There's cost of living adjustments that can be added to that. There's debt benefit, cash refund features. So all of the, I guess, objections that you hear about annuities where if I put my money in I'm not, and I die, I'm not getting it back. Well, that's not true. Um, there are all different benefit forms where you can basically set the income stream up to what matters most to you. Um, that's what we call here at Annua income now. The next thing I think that's the, 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 the biggest solution out there right now and the simplest solution. Um, it's something that we use multiple carriers for and again have that institutional pricing administratively simple process for that. Second solution, call income later. Same idea, participant retires, they direct a portion of their balance to an annuity to buy an income stream, but that income stream is payable at a later date. So typically, let's say the, uh, I know this may not be realistic anymore, but say retirement age is 65. Participant at 65 buys income to start at say 85, 80 or 85. That income is significantly higher now, and it really is designed to protect against longevity risk. The idea of living beyond your life expectancy and running out of money. Um, you know, a financial plan in retirement is not just annuities. Uh, if you look at retirement as, in some cases, potentially as long as your working life or say 75% of your working life, um, you wouldn't have invested in some kind of fixed income product on day one at your new job out of college. So you don't wanna do that at retirement either, but you do need replacement income. And that's where the immediate annuity functions. And you also need income for when we're old and don't know our name. And that's what the QLAC does. That's the longevity annuity, a qualified longevity annuity contract. The third option that is out there right now um, on some insurance company platforms is an accumulation annuity. And that's what Shri Reddy's comment was directed towards. It's the idea from day one of directing a portion of your deferrals or your employer match or contributions to buying income, bought and paid income, and accumulating that like a pension over your working life. That is where we have had the objections regarding portability and carrier safe harbor and insurance company safety. The SECURE Act has addressed that and the SECURE Act is going to open the doors for that type of product. Um, again, the idea is to start early, like any other savings, and buy more income at your younger ages and accumulate it so that when you come to retirement, you have your own personal pension that you've built. So those are the options that are available out there right now. There's a lot of different I think uh, even before the SECURE Act came out, a lot of smart people out there trying to uh, build solutions, uh, whether it be an investment solution, um,
whether it be adding the idea of insured solutions, guaranteed income into target date funds, existing target date funds, uh, or myriad of different things. Um, those are the existing solutions right now that are at least available on an institutional basis that we are working with here at Inua. Question, Inua is not an in-plan solution. Inua is an in-plan solution. When we talk in-plan here, uh, we define it as something available at the plan level. So from an accumulation standpoint, obviously that's in-plan. The annuity is in-plan, it's held by the plan. Um, when we talk about it on a distribution basis, whether it's a income now or income later, immediate annuity or QLAC, it's an in-plan option. The, the, the annuity itself is held by the participant once that annuity is bought, but it's really the option that is in plan. So annua is an in-plan solution. Question here, can participants purchase QLACs through your system in addition to immediate annuities? Not yet, but coming soon. So great question, stay tuned. The uh, institutional market for QLACs is not as broad yet as the retail market. Um, there is one carrier out there that is really leading the way with QLACs, um, and we have direct contact to them on that, but at this point, that is still a manual process. Uh, we are in the process of building an illustration tool, and then the next step would be actual purchase of QLACs through the Inua direct quote system. So again, stay tuned, uh, we're working on it. There's a question in here about another platform that um, I can't necessarily address because I, uh, somebody else's platform, um, but um, I think you know who you are. We can talk about that offline and we'll take that question offline. Another question here. Um, how often is carrier review and documentation required under the safe harbor? Again, that's an annual review. I may have confused some of you when I said that our existing clients, and this is before the SECURE Act, showed some, uh, some guidance here. Um, we're doing them twice a year. I still think that that's a best practice, at least to, if nothing else, um, keep tabs on the activity of the plan. I think that's it. I'll give it another second here to see if uh, any other questions pop up. Okay, I don't see anything coming in. Uh, gonna turn this back over to Krista at this point and uh, I wanna thank you guys for, uh, for attending today. Thank you, Jeff. Um, as a reminder, any questions that you were not able to answer that pop up um, as your day goes on or as the week goes on, please uh, feel free to send them to us. Jeff's contact information is listed there. and We can address anything offline. And thank you, Jeff, for a great presentation. A replay of today's session will be sent to all attendees and anyone who registered that was not able to attend via a follow-up email. Please keep an eye out for future webinar invitations. And on behalf of Anua and Dietrich, thank you for tuning in and have a great afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much.